Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. I've gotten several questions on this topic of dissociative identity disorder, which used to be called multiple personality disorder. What is it? What does it look like? And why does it happen? Dissociative identity disorder develops when a person fails to form a total personality that integrates all aspects of yourself and your emotions. So instead of having multiple personalities, you have different pieces of one personality. This is something that can happen as a result of severe physical or sexual abuse. It becomes a way to survive something that may not seem like it's survivable. So to get through it, you do it by dissociating. Dissociation is a state of being disconnected from your environment or yourself. It's kind of like the opposite of being mindful when you're engrossed in the moment. Here, you're removed from the moment. Some people feel as though they're looking at themselves from outside of their body. And some people feel as though they're in a completely different place. In that case, it's a total escape. I talk about dissociative episodes in this video on depersonalization and derealization. This is a disorder that falls under the broad category of dissociative disorders. Dissociation in general is a very protective coping mechanism. Psychologically, it's considered an immature or primitive defense mechanism because it doesn't build resilience or help you adapt to life's difficulties. Instead, it allows you to escape the horrors of a traumatic experience. So for example, if you are being tortured or sexually abused, you can use your mind to take you to a different place and in the moment feel as if it's not happening to you. This works well in the moment, but it's not adaptive if you use this to deal with other bad things later in life. So what happens with dissociative identity disorder is it interferes with your normal personality development. As a child, you learn how to manage your emotions from your caregivers and other important people in your life, like siblings and close relatives. Some of how you respond to the world is inborn, part of your hardwiring, but a good portion of it is molded by your early experiences with those you see as caregivers. If during that process you are exposed to extremes of fear and neglect, the train goes off the rails because you don't have the maturity to know how to process that kind of pain. An example of this is a child who's visited in their bedroom every night by a drunk or not drunk step parent. How does a scared child handle being hurt by an adult on a repeated basis? One of the ways is to zone out and go to a different place. Then when it's over, you still have to process the pain of being violated. So you compartmentalize that emotion and assign it to someone or something else. It's like having a hot potato in your hand and giving it to someone else to hold. Keep in mind with this scenario of repeated abuse in the home, the child is continuing to have contact with the abuser. And other people who failed to protect you, in your mind, also become abusers by proxy. So how do you continue to function in a world with so much danger around you? You take on the identity of someone else who's very strong. This helps in the short term, but in the long term, it keeps you from becoming a whole integrated person. Now, the difference between this and a multifaceted individual is the person without DID sees themselves as being one person with different aspects of their personality. The person with DID doesn't take ownership of the facets. The facets become their own entities with no connection between them. Here's an example to illustrate this difference. When my son was young, probably around three or four, he was doing something that I asked him not to do several times and testing my patience. I had not had a good day and felt very overloaded with work and home responsibilities, the working mom thing. My son did something blatantly defiant. I can't even remember what it was at this point. All I remember was I was completely out of gas at the end of the evening while my husband was totally relaxed on the couch watching television and tuning out my son's behavior. I was not going to let my son get away with it. And he must have read the expression on my face because as I turned to grab him to move him away from whatever it was, he had already started in motion and my arm hit his arm 
and he slid in his socks across the wood floor and into the wall, lost his balance and fell to the floor. It felt like the whole thing happened in slow motion. The three of us sat there for a few seconds staring. My husband broke the silence and said, Now I know what my coworker means by crazy mama. So from that point on, it became this thing that you better watch what you do so you don't bring out crazy mama. And by the way, my son wasn't hurt. In fact, he fell with some drama like basketball players do when they're trying to show a foul. So with this example, I'm showing you how I recognize that in general, I'm pretty reserved with my reactions, especially if I think that what I say or do will hurt someone's feelings. But if I don't have the mental reserve to exercise that kind of control, I can lose it and become crazy mama. But crazy mama is not a separate person. I accept that it's a more aggressive, angry part of my personality. With the DID, these separate entities experience life independent of each other, and there may be very little shared memory between them. So with DID, people can have gaps in memory where they can't account for chunks of time. This often causes a lot of distress that you can't remember ordinary events like driving to the store. There's still controversy around this diagnosis. Some people don't believe it really exists and is a manifestation of other illnesses like borderline personality disorder or post-traumatic stress disorder. With both of these disorders, you can have dissociative experiences, but people with borderline personality usually remember their actions and behaviors when they experience different emotions and can see those emotions as belonging to them. With DID, you don't accept the emotions as yours. It's part of a whole different self-identity. Sometimes the self-identity can be experienced as a voice in your head, and this can lead people to believe that you have a psychotic illness like schizophrenia. If you take an antipsychotic medication, the voices don't go away. They may lessen in volume or can seem harder to understand, but they're still present. And this can make you appear to be treatment resistant. Also, depending on how you report your problems, if you say you have five people living inside of you, some clinicians may take that to mean that you're delusional. So because of these biases against this illness as being something that isn't real or should be part of another illness, DID is often underdiagnosed. The treatment for DID is trauma-focused psychotherapy. It's recommended to proceed in three stages. The first is stabilizing your symptoms and focusing on safety. Because of the traumatic experiences and the psychologically immature way that your mind handled it, there's often a lot of fear and anxiety. Parts of you are the scared, helpless child. So during this stage, you learn grounding exercises that remind you that when you face certain situations, you are safe. You weren't safe back then, but you are safe today. The second stage focuses on processing the trauma by recalling details and grieving certain aspects of it. You don't wanna to move too fast to this stage until you get a better handle on managing your dissociation symptoms and other symptoms that can come along with this, like fear and desire for self-harm. In the third stage, you integrate the dissociated self-states. You have to come to understand what role each self-state played in coping with your experiences. What did those identities protect you from? What emotions and behaviors were you avoiding and not taking responsibility for? This kind of therapy is a lot of hard work, so it's a big commitment and you really have to be motivated to face it and stick with it. You need to see a therapist who's trained in trauma work and says that they have the experience working with people with dissociative disorders. This is probably not going to be your psychiatrist. This is not a standard therapy taught in psychiatry residency. You need a specific interest in this with additional training. If you have this problem, you can still have other disorders like depression or anxiety for which you may need to see a psychiatrist for medication, but medication does not resolve this fragmented personality issue. That really requires a professional to help you move through the stages of recovery. 
For more information on depersonalization derealization disorder, take a look at this video. See you next time.